Young player from Germany, 13 years old, forehand ground stroke, first day. Doesn't have the ready position. Very good that she's close to the baseline. Now she does center the racket here, but then she drops it a second time. So she doesn't set the swing by just turning her shoulders. So the racket's low, now it goes back up high. So she has to take the racket low a second time. It's inefficient. Very good if she's turned her body. Once again, she's close to the baseline. Very good if the left arm is parallel to the baseline. The racket's too far back. The racket face is open. She can't let the racket just free fall with gravity. If the racket goes back three feet, it's got to go forward three feet. That's six feet of extra length. She doesn't let the racket free fall. She's playing the ball close to shoulder level. So she didn't get the racket to blow the ball. Very short hitting zone. You want to be loose in the shoulder, not loose in the wrist. She's pulled horizontally. Tip of the racket severely points to the left. Brain memory, she'll do the same thing again. It's hardwired. Now she has to back up because she needs to take time to reset the swing. Racket's too far back. Now, she won't have a basic forehand, and because of this flaw, racket face open, racket too far back, it's going to be very difficult for her to have specialty shots, like an off pace passing shot, a top spin lob, a half volley. Contact points too high, very short hitting zone. Side view. Racket's low. I like the fact that her left hand's on the racket. Now the angle of the racket is an inverted. Racket faces up. Racket's too far back. It's clear, clearly past her right shoulder. The racket ideally, in the racket hand, the right hand should go down by the trailing knee. The right knee. She's facing faces forward, the body's leader. She's pulled open. Now the racket will follow the body. Now we obviously we skill test players, we film points on the first day. So, pitcher tells you a thousand words. Let's look at her forehand from the next angle. It would be very, very difficult with a horizontal swing to hit true topspin. Now I'll show you in the classroom, and then from the classroom we'll show you some on-court work. Very good, the racket's up high, very good, the left hand's on the racket, she's turned the body, she's close to the baseline, the racket's too far back. Now why does this happen? Well, players see their target through the net. Also, they think the tennis court's gigantic. It's less than 20 degrees wide. Another thing is they simply try to hit the ball too hard. And then also instruction, get your racket back. Instead of just leave the racket alone, turn your body. And one thing with young kids hitting with the red ball and the orange ball, they can have swings such as this and be consistent. So reset swing, racket goes low, angle the racket is inverted, racket face is open, racket's too far back, racket doesn't free fall, she swings in a waist level on this shot. She does have her eyes at the hit, she does lift up on both legs, so there are positives. And again, very short hitting zone, so she's gonna hate playing pushers. She's gonna complain about finding it difficult to play against a slow incoming ball. Bottom line, she can't hit true top. Let's go through her forehand. Instead of having the racket up high in the red position, she takes the racket low. Now when she does turn, the angle of the racket head is 45 degrees in the opposite direction. Here's the red position, 45 degrees here. Now if I were to turn and leave the racket alone, here's the volley, here's the backswing, here's the racket 45 degrees the opposite way. So the young player is taking the racket down 
In this position, now she just uses her arm, takes the racket up high, racket face opens up. Now the racket goes way behind her back, but she doesn't get the racket below the ball, and she has a very short hitting zone with a wrist release. So basically what she's doing with her palm, instead of just doing this, maybe she's going to turn like she's going to catch a ball, but now what she does is she just goes underneath. Just takes her hand right around the imaginary beach ball. Circular swing, circular spin. So, we have to work on her volley. So she starts with a volley. Now she can make the adjustment. It is good that she keeps her left hand on the racket. She makes the adjustment with the grip. Now from here, she can just let the racket go down. The racket doesn't go past her shoulder. The racket can go further in space as long as it's through body rotation. Now, it's not a matter of just teaching the basic forehand drive. Next, what we'll do is we we'll show you on the show her on the court, actually not only just hitting the forehand drive, where she's on her front foot coming over her front shoulder, you'll see her sliding where she's on her back foot and coming up over her back shoulder. Now her swing is vertical. Want the wrist to be fixed, want the shoulder to be loose. So now she can have that brushing action. So she can hit top spin. Like the racket's going up a flight of stairs, or she turns and the racket's going to go up an elevator this way. But it, she's made a lot of progress, but you have to go back and do the work. It's not a matter of just feeding your balls and saying, okay, you got it. She has to regroup, deprogram, reprogram. But you can see it's just a matter of a couple days that she's hitting her forehand better. All right, girls, shadow swing. Now you saw Micah's forehand in the classroom. Now we're just doing application. All right, now ready position, Kiara. High, low, high, inside out. Go ahead, shadow swing. Breathe out at the hit. Eyes down at the hit. Say yes. Shoulder relaxed. Okay, switch. So now she has a short back swing. Good turn. Arm is loose. She can just let the racket free fall with gravity. The stage development. We've got to go back to basics. All right, ready position. Turn. And again, breathing out. Hit and hold. She relaxes the swing from the elbow. Okay, one more time. Okay, hit and hold. Still would like to see her hand be much further away from her body this way. If she's too close here, she's too close here. Okay. All right, now with movement. Okay, slide, front foot, front shoulder, and breathe. Come back, crossover step. Back foot, back shoulder, breathe. Come back. Now Mike has a short back swing, so she can do this. And certainly tons of mini tennis, many, many different exercises. Double hits. Okay, ready, switch. A double hit is where we have the player stop the ball, hit the ball. So a lot of hours to go into changing someone's stroke. Okay, front foot, front shoulder, relaxed. The downswing creates the upswing, right? Right foot, back foot, back shoulder. And breathing out. Very good, relaxed swing. Effortless effort, it's gotta be efficient. All right, switch, we'll go one more time. All right, Kira, front foot, front shoulder. Let that racket free fall. Relax, swing. And again. And then come back. And then switch. So have that racket go way up. The first one is like it's going up a flight of stairs. Okay, now back. Now like rack is going up an elevator. Okay, switch. And care if I can see your racket. But now that Micah is not doing this, it's gonna be much easier to teach her many strokes. Obviously the basic forehand, but when it comes down to hitting a half volley, hitting a top spin lob, an off pace passing shot, it's all built on having an efficient backswing like this opposed to this. All right, girls, give me the high five.